Now that my navigation works, let's add some real content. To test our movie one more time and just do a quick review, we created a timeline where we could jump to different frames on the timeline that we had labeled, and we wrote a script that wired up the buttons. See part one if you missed that. What I want to do next is in, in my home frame and the content layer. As a matter of fact, I'm going to lock my buttons layer so I don't put anything in it. And I'm going to lock my action script layer so I don't put anything in it. That part of the movie is done. Let's freeze it. And I'm simply in my home frame going to put in my name, which I should spell correctly. And then I'm going to put in my email address. And what we'll do, shrink that line down. And another thing that I can do, um, the sort of poor man's link, not the best way to do it, but there is a link option. So what I'm going to do is put in a standard mail to Dave at DaveBricker.com so that that link will actually work. Let's save this and if I test my movie, if I click on that link, I should get an email window coming up addressed to me. And here it is. Let's close that. And the home content is working. Now let's go back to our timeline. Let's go to the bounce frame. Get rid of the B. And what I'm going to want to do in this frame is have a bouncing ball. I'm going to use my oval tool. I'm going to get rid of the stroke and I'm going to duplicate it. So I've got another one that's the same size. And I'm going to go to my color palette, which I'm going to grab over so that I have it in my list of things here. And I'm going to make this a radial gradient. The center of the gradient I want to be white. The main part red fading to black. Remember when you do a radial gradient, be sure to check fill, not stroke, because you can put gradients in either one. This is the center moving out to the edge, and I'm going to use my paint bucket tool, and I'm going to reposition the highlight on that. Then I'm going to go to this one, select radial. I'm going to get rid of the red by dragging it away. I'm going to double click this arrow. This one I'm going to set the alpha to zero. Now I have a fade, which you can see, from black to transparent black. But what I'm going to do is bring this center out to the edge. Now I've got a ball and I've got a shadow. So what I'm going to do for each of these is turn them into a graphic or a movie clip. It really doesn't matter, but I won't need to name them. I'm going to hit F8. And since this is a static element that I won't need to talk to with ActionScript, I'm just going to call it Ball as a graphic. And this is also a static element. Remember, you can register different positions. I'm going to put the registration point in the center, and this is going to be called shadow. So I've got a ball and a shadow. Now I'm going to use my transform tool. I'm going to squash the shadow down. I'm going to move it under the ball. And you'll notice in this case it's over the ball. So I'm going to say modify, arrange, and uh, there it is. Modify, arrange, send it back. I've got those two pieces and I'm going to highlight them both. And now I'm going to make a movie clip called Bouncer. Let me set this to Movie Clip because I'm going to need to be able to give it an instance name. And you'll see here in my properties that it doesn't have an instance name and I'm going to call it Bouncer. Now let's go to the timeline and what I'm going to do is go inside this timeline for Bouncer. Now over 
in my flash window, you can see that I'm inside Bouncer. I'm going to put this back in the video frame. Uh, so I'm inside the movie clip, and what I'm going to do is go to Modify, Timeline. You can't see these uh, menus here, unfortunately, on my screen. I'm going to say Distribute to Layers. You could also do a copy and paste, get rid of the empty one. Now I've got one for the ball and one for the shadow, which is nice because um, you can only animate one object in a given layer. I'm going to move them down and let's think this through. We're going to go down, up, down, and move Eclipse loop. So I'm going to go down, I'm going to put in a keyframe, and then another keyframe. Down, up, and down. Now of course right now they don't do anything. Let's go to the middle frame, and I'm using my shift arrow which gives me 10 pixels per click to put that up and I'm going to click anywhere in between and I'm going to say insert classic tween and then here I'm going to say insert classic tween now at this point I should have things working but there are a few problems I go to bounce and you'll notice that my ball has a very pump like motion let's do something about that also let's do something on the middle frame. I'm going to click on the object. I'll go to the frame to get there, then I'm going to click on the object so that when I go to the properties it's showing me that the graphic is selected. And if I pull my properties panel down and go color effect alpha, um, I can set this to about 65. Now you'll notice on my timeline that I'm fading in and out. I'm going to select anywhere in the tween and then under properties I'm going to ease out because the ball is going to slow down. If you have difficulty remembering in and out think of it as your gas pedal on your car. If you ease the pedal out your car slows down. If you ease the pedal in it accelerates. Let's go back to the other tween here go to its properties and we will ease it in. The last thing I want to do is on this very last frame you'll notice that it's the same as the first frame and I don't want there to be any kind of a sticking uh, because that appears the same way. I'm gonna give it a little nudge let's test our movie. If I go to the bounce I have a nice smooth bouncing ball.